Samantha Clark was born on the 17th of July 1991. Clark graduated from Orange County High School three months before she went missing. Clark was last seen in Orange, Virginia, shortly after midnight on September 13th, 2010. The 19-year-old told her younger brother she was leaving the family home and would be back in the morning. She left their home on Lindsay Drive, taking only her house key. Sam didn't tell her brother where she was going, and her mother Barbara was working the night shift at work, and was surprised to learn that her daughter had left. Sam would never return home, and her family reported her missing two days later. On that night when Barbara left for work, her daughter was in her pyjamas watching TV in the living room, her son, Hunter, 12 at the time, was in his room. Barbara would later find Samantha's pyjamas lying on her bed, so it was certain she changed into different clothing before leaving home. Sam didn't have a cell phone. Samantha's mother, Barbara, reported that her daughter didn't typically go outside after dark. Additionally, she reported that no public transportation would have been available at that time of the night, so she was likely picked up by somebody. The investigation immediately focused on the people who she had recently become acquainted with. There's a new group of people who she had met the week prior to her disappearance. One of the people in that group was then 45-year-old Randy Taylor, through phone records, authorities are certain Randy was the last person known to have spoken with Samantha. Furthermore, he is said to have called the house six times that night. Samantha and Taylor met at a restaurant off Route 29, called Northside. Samantha was at the restaurant with her mother after the two had attended a high school football game together. While there, Samantha struck up a conversation with two younger men in their 20s. Taylor happened to be a friend of the young men and joined them at the restaurant. In 2011, Orange Police charged Taylor with being a felon in possession of a gun after planting a tracking device on his car but a Greene County Circuit Court judge ruled law enforcement had conducted a warrantless search and the charges were dropped. On August the 3rd, 2013, 17-year-old Alexis Murphy left her home in Shipman, Virginia, to travel to Lynchburg. She was last seen at a Liberty gas station in Lovingston, Virginia, on the evening of August the 3rd, where she was driving a white 2003 Nissan Maxima. In the following days, she was reported as missing and a search was launched. Murphy's car was found on August the 6th in Albemarle County, where it had been abandoned in a theatre parking lot. On August the 10th, the police announced that they were trying to identify photographs of persons seen in close proximity to Murphy. Gas station cameras captured Alexis at a gas station in Lovingston. It was a common hangout for teens. Cameras there captured a man holding a door open for Alexis. The man had a large neck tattoo and he was driving a camouflage Chevrolet Suburban. Film showed Alexis following his vehicle in hairs. Investigators had another tool at their disposal, cell phone pings. They led investigators to an abandoned property along Route 29. The location was not well kept. The shrubbery on the land was overgrown, taking over the old house, but that wasn't the only thing hidden. On the land, authorities found a camouflage suburban and a camper. The vehicles belonged to a 48-year-old man named Randy Taylor. 
Prior to arresting Taylor, police investigated him as one of several people who appeared on the gas station's surveillance video. The police searched Taylor's camper where they found a strand of Murphy's hair. Authorities found DNA evidence that Murphy had been in Taylor's camper. As Taylor lived near a river, dive teams and canine units conducted a search and found a red sweater. The sweater was initially speculated to have belonged to Murphy, but an investigator later stated otherwise. Taylor's case was brought to trial on May 1st, 2014. Evidence brought against Taylor included testimony from a cashier at the gas station, a bloody t-shirt and evidence pulled from Taylor's camper, which included the strand of hair, a torn fingernail and a diamond earring stud. On May the 8th, Taylor was found guilty on the charges of first degree murder. During the sentencing, Taylor tried to bargain for a lesser sentence. He said that a third person had been involved and that he would reveal the location of the body in exchange for a 20-year sentence. Taylor's offer was declined. On July the 23rd, 2014, Taylor was given two life sentences. Nearly seven years later, on December the 3rd, 2020, remains were located on private property in Lovingston. The remains were transported to the Central District Office of the Chief Medical Examiner in Richmond and positively identified as Alexis Murphy on February the 5th, 2021. The identification of the remains was not announced publicly until February the 17th, 2021 to allow Murphy's family time to grieve and make proper arrangements. On Friday, January the 15th, 2021, over 10 years after her disappearance, the town of Orange Police Department announced it was moving the investigation into a new phase. Due to new information and advances in investigative and forensic technology, Samantha's missing persons investigation has been reclassified as an active abduction and murder. OPCD Chief James Fenwick said it's a major step in the case and one Fenwick says was the result of new evidence. Due to the security of the ongoing investigation, he cannot disclose what the evidence was. He says the reclassification will not change the way his investigators go about the case.